without both of them we cannot exist it's all baba's wonder that what he has made us what we are today so it is just like they say in the world what you are is the gift from god and what you make of yourself is your gift to god so we are baba's gift but now we have to give a gift to god in return by fulfilling the hopes and desires that he has for us so first of all i am very very pleased to be with all of you uh, you know when we meet with the brahmin family the distance dissolves isn't it we forget whether we are in the east or west or north or south <laughs> because uh, just like in parandam in the subtle region there is no day no night no clock <laughs> and so when we begin to meet in a spiritual way so we go beyond everything everything becomes stand still eternal mm -hmm. and so it is really i'm very very happy to meet all of you after a long time virtually not physically mm -hmm. and of course you know when brahmins meet with each other what do we do in laukik family when they meet they start to talk about their problems and their worries and so when we meet with baba's children baba's family we share the jewels of knowledge we share the treasures of knowledge that baba has given us so as they say when you get a piece of sweet you know if you eat it yourself the sweetness of the sweet does not increase in india we are always told like that whenever you get a piece of sweet you must distribute to many before you eat it because the sweetness of that sweet increases by distributing huh? so this is what baba has taught us this is what dadi janki has taught us that we should distribute what we get from baba so that what we have will keep on multiplying increasing constantly so one thing i was thinking about today smoothly was that you know everyone in our world today are seeking for some kind of support some kind of protection some kind of security and safety but there is no place in the world where you can feel secure and safe the only you know the place that we can think about is god's heart the only support that we can think about is god's support and god's strength but the question is that who can get that strength and support from one god there is a condition and the condition is that baba says whatever maryadas whatever code of conduct that baba has drawn for us in this brahmin life if we can remain within that line of code of conduct you know so we remain safe because maya negativity is not allowed inside that umbrella so you know one is the uh, the protection umbrella of baba if i come out of that umbrella they, then i will be in the shadow of maya so this is what baba is blessing us today that you only make effort to stay within the code of conduct the maryadas that baba has drawn for you and you will always experience baba's support 
and when we experience baba's support we don't have to depend on anything else or anyone else so that transformation that happens within us is that we stop being a devotee we become a brahmin so today baba has defined these two things who is called a devotee why a child why baba's children become devotees sometimes from being a brahmin devotee means someone who is always asking for something begging for something so we are children of god but sometimes when we come out of that line of maryada we become beggars we become devotees then we start asking but when we remain within that code of conduct we remain as a true brahmin the sanskara of asking the sanskara of being dependent disappears so sometimes people ask me sister what is the what is the special effort we should make you know in this brahmin life according to the call of time i always tell them you don't make any special effort whatever ordinary things that baba has taught the discipline maryadas rules you give importance to that make it special follow them with that kind of importance that is the effort that is needed so then the rest baba will take care of so that is why in the future one of the phrase that we give for the deities is maryada purushottam so we become the highest amongst the humans because we follow the code of conduct and so just let us protect as they say when you protect the maryadas the maryadas will automatically protect you so maya only has the chance hmm, to interfere in our brahmin life when we step out that is the story of ramayana you know sita was taken away by ravan because she crossed the line drawn by lakshman rama's brother so later on she repented but of course maya comes in many forms sometimes very attractive form sometimes simple form sometimes royal form sometimes in cognito form i just need to recognize and i don't come out of the line of maryadas no matter how much the maya can try to tempt me create temptation uh, make me feel uh, you know merciful towards maya but i don't need to cross the line then i will always remain under the canopy of protection and i will always remain safe so that is the very beautiful blessing that baba is giving us today you know don't become a devotee from brahmin don't become a devotee from being a child a child has the right devotees always ask for something so let me change the sanskara of asking and become a soul who is full of all right right so today is the second of march we have already finished two months in you know in this year so today baba is talking a lot about god you know in the path of bhakti they believe that on one side they say god is beyond name and form he doesn't have any name and form but on the other side in bhagavad gita they show arjuna had the vision of god and he saw god so bright brighter than thousands of suns put together 
so he he called out god saying please stop stop i cannot tolerate this heat <coughs> so of course god cannot be you know in that form but again the devotees have confusion on one side they say god has no name and form but on the other side they show him with thousand times brighter than the sun contradictory their own words are totally different from each other so baba is making it clear today that if they say god is thousand times brighter than the sun he has a form so how can we say he is beyond name and form if anything exists in this world it must have a name and form for example ether you know we don't ether it is something very abstract but there is ether so we have to believe so we cannot say it has no name and form so god also has a name form land time of coming into this world and so once we know him as he is what he is and who he is then we can have accurate yoga with baba and that is what baba says today in the murli amongst children also they know baba as he is what he is according to the effort they make so when we have accurate recognition of god then we have accurate yoga and then accurate yoga helps us to destroy our sin so we should consider any kind of influence in this brahmin life as infection influence is infection of the intellect so when the intellect is infected it cannot connect with baba so naturally it gets separated so never ever get infected that means influenced by any attraction he sita was staying with rama very happily in the forest in exile but what separated her from rama the golden deer maya also was very clever <laughs> she knew that women get attracted by glittery things <laughs> even though they know that all that glitter is not gold but still they get attracted to the glitter so maya came in front of sita as a golden deer and she expressed her desire to rama i want this of course it was not real deer it was maya so he couldn't catch so it's a big story that is how she got separated from baba rama so attraction uh, separates you from baba no more attraction attraction is also a kind of infection influence is also a kind of infection that separates me from baba so what is tapasya means what is yoga and what is tapasya is there a difference ah huh? yoga means remembrance tapasya means intense remembrance you know there are three types of remembrance we can have any time ah huh? so intense remembrance means troublesome remembrance one is to make effort to remember baba and second is remembrance coming to me naturally but intense remembrance means 
exclusive. That is called exclusive unadulterated remembrance where no one is included. That is called troublesome remembrance. You know, even if you want to forget, you cannot forget. Maybe you have question to Baba. Baba, tell me how to forget you. Have you ever asked that question to Baba? <laughs> Always we ask this question, Baba, I forget to remember you. <laughs> huh? So from today, increase your quality of remembrance in such a way that you ask Baba, Baba, I just can't forget you. Please tell me method to forget you. Mm. Huh? Because I remember Dadis sharing their experience after Baba became a vet. You know, they had so much of love for Bab Dada. Of course, not attachment, but so much love that they could not forget Baba. You know, so in order to forget Baba, they kept themselves busy doing Baba service, diverted their intellect. <laughs> so sometimes we ask this question, we all remember Baba, right? Does Baba remember you sometimes? How do you know when Baba remembers you? Right? So my aim should be, I will remember Baba so much, so much, so much that Baba's sleep is also disturbed. Baba has to wake up in the middle of the night you know, Shiva Baba has to make emergency landing in the body of Brahma Baba to give me response. Yes. No, it has happened in the Yajna. No, the Dadi with whom I used to stay, Rudev Pushpa Dadi, Chandramani Dadi's elder sister, she shared her experience with us when I was living with her in the early days. So one night, you know, usually in the Yajna, 10 o'clock, they turn off all the lights. So it's after 10 o'clock, she just went to bed, but somehow doesn't know what happened. Baba's remembrance was like overwhelming, you know, like tears were flowing. She couldn't sleep. And then so she got up from there and she went outside, there was an easy chair. She sat there and the eyes was closed, but she was wide awake and the tears were just flowing. It was 11, 12 o'clock. And there Brahma Baba was sleeping in his room. Lachu Dadi was the Brahmani. So at 12 o'clock, Baba said, Lachu, go and see in this Yajna who is disturbing my sleep. Poor Lachuben, three, four hundred people sleeping. So how can she go and search who? But then Baba said she has to do. So she took a torchlight, slowly, not disturbing anybody, went room to room, room to room, and finally she found one bed empty. But then where is that sister God? Who knows? Then she saw her sitting in the corridor, on the easy chair, but totally lost. So she came and told Baba so and so. Baba said, okay, bring her in front of me. So Lachu Dadi brought Dadi in front of Baba. Baba did not speak. Shri Baba has already landed in Brahma Baba's body at that time. And then Baba made her sit in front. So as they say, love begets love. Remembrance begets remembrance. So Baba gave the return to Drishti. 
you know, through Drishti, Baba responded to her for the love and remembrance. And then after that, Baba said, okay, take her back to her room. You know, so have the aim. You know, fighting remembrance, struggling remembrance, that time has gone now. Now, just even by saying the word Baba, I must get lost. So somebody was defining what is volcanic remembrance. How do you define volcanic remembrance? You know what they said? Get lost and disappear. That is volcanic remembrance. <laughs> uh, get lost from this world and disappear. It is like going into the bottom of the ocean, Sini. You become part of the ocean yourself. But today, if we check our state, how it is? We are taking little dip in the ocean <laughs> and becoming very happy. Oh, I had very good yoga today. A little swim in the ocean waves. <laughs> we, we have not tasted the, the depth of the ocean. You know, so really that is very important because that tapasya, concentration and determination, you know, having all relationships with Baba, all attainments from Baba, no leakage in the intellect. So when I say Baba, just think you are lost. You are lost. So Maya cannot do anything because she can't see you. You are lost. You are lost in Baba. So how can Maya see you? So now have the aim to have quality remembrance. You know, every time I sit half an hour, no one and nothing should come. Even thinking of service is adulteration. Even churning knowledge in yoga is adulteration. It's not pure remembrance. Because there is a different time you can churn knowledge. Like you are doing mundane activities, right? Like uh, driving, taking shower, getting ready, sweeping, mopping, ironing. Those time you can churn. But a time that you specially like Amrit Vela, evening meditation, meditation before Murli, this is not for churning knowledge. This is not for planning for service. You know, I tell you a joke. You know, once in Madhuban, I saw in Baba's room some Western sisters. You know, they were sitting there and writing down so many, so much, writing all the time. I was sitting at the back and I was observing, wow, so this sister must be having so much experience, you know. Maybe she is making a note of her, all her experience. So we came out and I asked her, what was your experience? You were writing so much. Sister, I was uh, uh, writing down all the things I need to do. I have to collect my clothes from the dobi. I have to go to do the shopping. I have to give the... <laughs> so, sitting in front of Baba, she is making a list of things that she has to do after meditation. So, she was not meditating. So, sometimes that is what we do. Sometimes we do window shopping, sitting in meditation, and sometimes we do things, list of things to do. No, that is not the time. We have to now really, you know, uh, because now it is the time to become equal to the father, isn't it? You know, so in the sense that me and Baba cannot be separated. We are together. You know, that feeling of struggling, laboring should finish. Why some soul become Ram Sita? 
you know, all of us are studying in the same school. Some become Lakshmi Narayan, some become Ram Sita. So what are the two degrees that was lacking in that soul? No, Baba has explained in different murlis, two degrees is, one is lack of remembrance, lack of purity. These are the two degrees that make them 14 degrees. And that is why they were given the symbol bow and arrow. Warrior sign. They were still fighting and left the body. So death has no discipline. Death has no calendar. So we don't know when is our last moment. So mama used to say in those days, consider every breath as your last breath. Every moment as your last moment. And so don't think of anyone, anything. You know, Jagdish Bhai used to say beautifully, love everyone, love one, love all, but don't love anyone more than you love Baba. That is danger. If you love anyone more than you love Baba, they will come in between you and Baba. Or don't allow anyone to love you more than they love Baba. Otherwise, you will go in between them. So that is not good. So you know exactly where your attachment is. You know exactly where your desires are when you sit in yoga. That is where your leakage begins. Some relationship, some unfulfilled desire. No. I got Baba, I got everything. I don't want anything. You know, this is the slogan I need to keep for the whole year. I just want to give, give, give. I don't want anything from anyone. Why? Because Baba has given me more than I need. Right? More than we asked he has given. So I don't need anyone. So I don't have any complaints about anyone. I don't need. When you want something, when you don't get, then you complain. I don't want anything. Baba has given me everything. I just have one desire. I want to give. Whether it is respect, whether it is love, whether it is cooperation. So this is what tapasya, you know, yoga, then tapasya, then volcanic yoga. Three stages. Only then the fire will be ignited and our sins are burned. Otherwise, you know, we just please ourselves thinking always. The other day, you know, you know, uh, Amir Chen Bai, the one who left the body the other day, he was sharing one joke. He said one time one brother came, you know, one brother was sitting in the classroom. So he asked him, what were you doing, brother, for one hour sitting here? He said, um, I was remembering Baba. So he, he asked him, where did you go? He said, where to go? <laughs> so that means he did not go anywhere. <laughs> He was struggling to remember. He was not remembering. <laughs> so, you know, it just, ex you, you, sometimes we say, what is your experience in yoga today? Oh, I feel so peaceful. I feel so light. That is not any experience. I must feel Baba's love. I must feel Baba's power. That really shakes me. That is experience. Peace, you can go to the beach side and sit, also you get peace. 
you go on the top of the mountain also you can feel peace so what is what what is great about sitting here and feeling peace you know so next time when you want to assess whether you had really experience is when you feel that love igniting your heart your 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 soul empowered you know filled with that god's power that is real experience so that is why i think we all have to pay a lot of attention to the quality of remembrance the all subjects are based on remembrance once our remembrance is accurate then dharana will be easy service is automatic so beautiful so i think so be already yes it is time but i wish i wish if you would please share with us i know you're up every day for amrit vela really early and you have this you have either had to make a lot of effort or it came naturally i don't know but you have this ability to concentrate in this volcanic yoga you seem to always have had this what is your secret please um you see i have passion for amrit vela ever since i became brahmin yeah. it's my passion you know i don't make any effort i i set the alarm every day i now i nowadays i wake up at 2 o'clock uh, so between 2 and 2 22 to 15 i take a short shower you know i want to just make sure that i am really fresh and alert and um, so then i have a program for myself so like for the first half an hour i want to experience bodyless state and then the next half an hour angelic state mm. and then um experiencing in the soul world half an hour no we have i have two and half hours at least two hours 2:30 to 4:30 so the last half an hour uh, sometimes i serve through the mind good wishes and pure feeling so i have an aim so mind automatically goes mm-hmm. and uh, i you know when i wake up from the time i wake up until i go and sit i keep my intellect occupied repeating certain positive thoughts mm-hmm. like i am powerful i am peaceful i am healthy i am happy i am so grateful things like that i don't keep my intellect void mm-hmm. you know and not uh, thinking about any other things for the day so that also helps because it has made my intellect engine already warm up <laughs> you know so then when you sit down uh, so it becomes easy i used to conduct meditation before but because of my operation and my leg i don't go up every day nowadays i do it in my room uh, because otherwise it's too much of preparation to go come back again get ready by 5:30 so i do it in my room but i have this program so once this is what i make up my mind determine so i stick to that so not allow distraction to come you know uh, very rarely uh, any feeling of that such it comes but no otherwise no <laughs> such a good example such a yeah, that has been my passion passion amrutvela and murli yeah that's my passion yeah. 